Hi, my name's Elliot and I'm currently going through therapy. Usually me and my friends would have a few drinks, have a laugh, listen to music, eat good food, etc. We would just have fun. And after all, they do say laughter is the best medicine. We could offload onto each other and reassure one another that things are going to be okay. And for most, myself included, that can be enough to remedy any stress, anxiety or mental health issues people may be dealing with. However, people deal with things differently and sometimes it just isn't enough. There are many options when it comes to mental health support. The NHS is at the front line of battling mental health, and their total mental health funding, including learning disabilities and dementia, has increased to £14.31 billion in the 2020-2021 budget. But I wanted to look into the solutions that are not necessarily in the spotlight. I was scouring the internet for alternatives and found the EFTI tapping group on Facebook. This was a goldmine, a tight-knit community of like-minded people sharing material and their own opinions about EFT. The Emotional Freedom Technique, abbreviated as EFT, is an alternative to the traditional treatment for healing pain and emotional distress. EFT is commonly referred to as tapping or psychological acupressure and uses the fingertips to stimulate energy points in the body. Jackie Footman is a leading EFT master practitioner and I reached out to her and arranged an interview to find out all about EFT and if and how it could help me. So we are currently en route to Devon to meet up with EFT Master and EFT Master Trainer Jackie Footman um, to hopefully ask her a bit more about EFT and learn a bit more about it. Um, and I've been implementing EFT into my life and using it when I've needed it. And it's kind of changed my outlook on EFT, so I'm hoping you know, to keep the unbiased view and learn a bit more about it before I make my decision. Yeah, I'm feeling excited but a little bit nervous too. So, yeah, three hour drive ahead of us. Let's get on the road. Yes, um, I'm Jackie, Jackie Footman. I am an EFT practitioner and trainer. When you're working in a group, everybody is tapping together and there's a sort of a combined intention. So, if I work with one person in a group and the other people are tapping along being supportive, it's like their focus is on that person and wanting things to go well for that person. So there's, there's, there's like an extra energy to it, which does seem to help. When it's one-to-one, -one, obviously that's much more confidential, so people can go into more detail and speak more freely sometimes than they would in a group. So there's pluses and minuses of both ways. Obviously the things anything that is emotional based because it does what it says on the tin basically emotional freedom techniques so if you are um, if you can reduce the intensity of an emotion then you will have emotional freedom in terms of that particular emotion um, so anything that has an emotional problem at its root so whether it's anxiety whether it's a past trauma whether it's a phobia um, endless but there's also things like like practical um, physical illnesses people have used it on headaches so, um, I know somebody who scalded themselves and tapped on the, the burn and their burn they didn't get a burn basically I also know somebody who'd um, broken an ankle and couldn't do couldn't get to A&E for a while and they kept themselves going through an event um, which is with tapping for the pain um, works very well on chronic pain as well so um, there, there is a saying for EFT try it on everything because the EFT is a very short sort of routine to do and you'll know straight away if you get a result with it so it doesn't harm to spend a minute trying it it's completely safe I just um, spent a day on Zoom with the school in Wiltshire I think it was a first actually because I know that various practitioners have gone into school to do EFT for exam stress and things like that. There's a lot of research on exam stress with students. Um, student, you know, the students need strategies that they can use when things get too much for them at the moment as often happens. Uh, I, I have used it a lot in my own life. Um, I, I was a teacher myself 
and I had to take early retirement from teaching and that's the point at which I switched to doing EFT. Helped me through that period enormously. I'd, I'd had a wrong diagnosis which I spent four years trying to get well. When I, they did find out what was the problem and the first thing was I had to go into hospital for some surgery. I was out of hospital in record time um, and I was just tapping about every aspect of it and on the fourth day they said well actually you're well enough to go home so and I really believe that by supporting myself with the tapping that made a massive difference to my recovery. For it to work at its best you need to be tuned into your own truth of exactly how you feel. I think just be really true to how you feel is the most important thing. So as recommended by so many within the Facebook group, uh, I'm using EFT in conjunction with other activities. So every day for the next three months, I promise myself that I'll start my day with 30 minutes of yoga to relax the mind. I will do some form of exercise, so I have 10,000 steps or 45 minutes of weightlifting, which I would like to say that I do every day, but it just doesn't happen. And also eat better and hopefully sleep better. Um, so yeah, these are all in, in aid of myself. I'm trying to be a better me. Now, following Jackie's advice, I was using EFT in all aspects of my life. I was finding myself tapping when I was stressed, when I was just doing work, and even when I didn't feel any emotional stress or pain, I would tap out of habit. So I'm trying to like fully engage with EFT and tapping, and I've been sticking to my promise of doing EFT daily, and I have seen some positive change, and whether or not that's reliable evidence, I'm still not sure on, because I just don't think I've had enough time, and something in the back of my head is still playing devil's advocate, telling me that this is just a waste of time, and it's, it's a, a placebo. I mean, I didn't originally start doing this to deal with any of my problems, it was more, I wanted to learn about it and see whether I was right to be skeptical about it and, you know, what people were saying about it, but it has actually had a positive impact on my life so far, and I'm surprised about it. My journey then got interrupted just six weeks in, as I got tonsillitis. But I have tonsillitis, and it's not till tomorrow until I can get antibiotics. So I spent all of yesterday tapping. And this morning I feel better. Um, I don't feel like 100% myself, but I do feel a lot better than I did yesterday. And I didn't take anything, I literally just, no medicine, nothing, I just tapped. But what was weird for me was that my brain defaulted to EFT when I wasn't feeling myself. I was definitely seeing some real changes in my life. After recovering from my tonsillitis, I was back on track. And I got the opportunity to speak to Pearl Opian who is an EFT master trainer based in Jerusalem. She shared with me her thoughts on how EFT is perceived nowadays and also where it should be best applied. So my name is Pearl, I'm Pearl Lopian and I'm an EFT master trainer and practitioner. So uh, I'm not a big follower of all these things. I, uh, you know, I live in Jerusalem, so I don't uh, see the English news, you know, so much, but um, I would say we've come a long way. We have come a long way in the last 14 years. I used to have to explain to people about tapping. Now I very rarely have to do that. I do think it should be in every school. I mean, if that's not my remit. I might be doing that in Israel. I don't know. It's, I've just been approached possibly to uh, work in the schools, but I think that children will benefit from it like 20 minutes a day. That would be a, that would be amazing because it's just great for calming down. Children release things so quickly; they just need a few minutes, and um, they're done. They're done. So I think it should be everywhere. What Pearl said really resonated with me. In the last six months, the contrast between how I felt then and how I feel now is huge, and I truly agree that EFT should definitely have its own space in the conversation, even if it takes a few more years for people to learn about it. I definitely feel like it's had a positive impact on my life, whether that's placebo or not, I'm still yet to determine, but I definitely don't regret trying EFT, and I definitely think everyone should give it a go.